Hello world, in this video we're going to walk through our first experience with jQuery. I'll let other videos, articles uh, describe what jQuery is, why we would use it. Here I just want to go through, this is the first time I've ever messed with JavaScript and or jQuery, what am I doing? We're going to be using a couple of different things. I've got a great article uh, from uh, Spire Studios that has a great uh, kind of a tutorial, a little bit of a walkthrough and also going to be using a couple pages from the jQuery documentation itself. The first thing almost any tutorial on jQuery will tell you that you have to do is go download the library. And um, it'll take you to the download page which is here and there's two options. There, You can either download the library and host it locally the same way you would create a new CSS file, host it right next to your uh, HTML files, you can do your JavaScript files, your jQuery files the same way, or you can use something called a CDN, a content delivery network, uh, which lets someone like uh, Google or jQuery.com in this instance, someone with big honking servers that are really fast, host it for you. And I'm going to recommend that we use the CDN because uh, it's it ends up being a little bit faster but it saves you from having to go and download that file and having tons and tons of copies of that file on your hard drive uh, when you're doing development work so from the jQuery download page we're going to use jQuery CDN and jQuery currently has two versions uh, the the one dot X version and the or the one dot one dot X and the one dot two dot X we're going to be using the one dot one if you read on the download page, the reason for that is because uh, the 2 uh, stream does not support Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8. And uh, because we might be doing development uh, for those versions of IE, we're still going to be using the jQuery 1. So if we scroll down, we've got jQuery 1.10.1. Very good. We'll copy that. Now I've got a simple HTML and CSS files set up. This is from the Spry Studios, the Spire Studios uh, demo. And I've got link to just a local CSS file and we will paste in this script tag. Now there's two ways that we can use uh, script tags with our HTML. We can put them in the head. Well, it's kind of like, I guess it's kind of like CSS. There's several different ways. We could put it in line. Uh, with each element there are attributes that allow us to use JavaScript with them. That is extremely not recommended. Bad practice. Uh, the other way would be to put them in the head of our document just like we do with our CSS. And the third way would be to put them uh, right before the closing body tag. And there are different schools of thought here. For our um, use here what we're going to do is we're going to put it as the last thing before our closing body tag. So we have our CSS in the head, but then we have all of our HTML elements or the DOM, D-O-M, that JavaScript and jQuery will be interacting with. And then we finally put our JavaScript at the very end. This helps with our page load time uh, by putting it at the end because these JavaScript files can often be pretty big. And it also allows us to ensure that any elements that we want to interact with are already rendered on the page. So we pasted in our jQuery library and if we save we'll notice absolutely nothing happens. All we've done now, if I go ahead and inspect and come over to the network line, all we've done is go out and grab it. Okay, We haven't done anything with jQuery yet, but that's that's the first half of the battle. We're going to do something very similar and we're going to now add our scripts. And these can be done the same way, very simply. But notice now this is different. So this is going to be a script file in my folder that I host. I'm not going out to another website. And if I save this, um, you'll notice now it tells me, hey, we can't, we can't find it. So I need to create that. So we'll create a new file and we'll save it in the same folder, call it script.js. And I'm just going to put this over here. Uh, 
And if we walk through the tutorials, when we start using jQuery, we're using this function. Now this is the syntax. Let me paste this in here. Uh, JavaScript is a, a more, I guess, normal programming language compared to CSS and HTML. Uh, HTML being a markup language, so it's not even really a programming language. So we've got variables, we've got functions, a lot of new things we haven't talked about yet in our web design uh, courses. The dollar sign here is simply a variable that we use to represent jQuery. And this is saying when the document is ready, perform this function. So all of our different jQuery code is going to be inside of here. And we'll scroll down a little bit more and say, what, what do we want to do? The first thing we want to do is go find an ID of my quote and hide it. And then we're going to have two different ways that we go about doing this. So we can copy and paste this in and kind of dissect it bit by bit. When you paste it in, you notice you get these lines of code. They do have a nice little copy-paste functionality here that I'm just not using for some reason. Let me get some indentation. So I've created a variable called my quote, and we've identified it as find the ID of my quote. And do we have an ID of my quote? Yes. The block quote here, this block quote has an ID of my quote. jQuery is going to find that and store it in this variable my quote. If I got rid of everything else, I just cut that out, it, we still haven't done anything. No changes. Now that we have this, we want to do something with it. And the first thing we're going to do is hide it. So if I save this file and refresh, you'll notice that it goes away. So now jQuery has interacted with my web page, interacted with my CSS, and put a display none on my block quote. Now that doesn't seem too useful yet. That's what the rest of our code is about. What we want to do is find a button and when we click the button, we want to show it. We want to create some level of interactivity. And that's what this syntax looks like. I'm not going too deep into what the syntax is. The tutorial does that and other videos will do that. But I just want to explain the logic here. And do we have something with a class? That's what, remember, this is kind of really closely linked to CSS. So up here, we use the hash symbol to find an ID. Here, we use uh, a period to find a class. Do we have something with a class of button? Absolutely. Click here to show the block quote. So the blue button here, what we want to do is when we click that, show me that block quote again. Let me save and we'll refresh. So it's still hidden, but what happens when I click here? It shows it. And we've used our variable, which means it's simply a pointer back to find that ID of my quote, which is our block quote element show it. That's a function that jQuery creates for us to ability to show something. And 500 is simply how fast do you want me to do it? If I change that to 5,000 and save, refresh, we'll notice that we end up with a much slower five second. So this is our first interaction with jQuery. Now we've got an HTML file that we style with CSS and we interact with with JavaScript. And instead of writing plain JavaScript, which can be kind of uh, difficult to grasp, we use the jQuery library, which has all these nice little functions to use uh, to, to allow us to write really quick code to interact with our HTML and CSS. Thanks for watching.